Hi everyone. For some strange reason, I get a lot of requests about what type of equipment I use for doing all my videoing and video editing. So now that winter's here, I have a little bit of free time. I figured I'd write up something and show you what I have. Before I get started, I wanted to send a thanks to all of my Patreon subscribers for supporting our channel and also to our primary supporters at trueaquaponics.com, glassbottleoutlet.com, and greenlifeplanet.net. So I will leave links to all of these people down in the description below, and it'd be great if you could pay them a visit. So overall, for my video editing, I try to uh, keep the expenses fairly low so I don't have a lot of really fancy equipment. You've seen from my other videos most likely that I've pieced together things here and there with the aquaponics system. Um, don't like to buy a whole lot of things new. And in my last video I did one on piecing together some light panels for about $25 a piece which is a pretty good money saving. So overall I don't have a lot of fancy equipment but uh, this is what I do use. So my first camera was this Kodak Easy Share 7590. This thing is probably about 10 years old. I think I paid about $250 for it. And I shot a lot of my early videos with this. It's not um, high def, but back when I was doing these, I wasn't really that serious into doing the videos. But the original Harbor Freight Greenhouse video is all shot on this. It actually is still used for some of my stills because the optics on it are very good for this older camera and uh, I really like it. When I started doing the dome videos I got this Kodak Easy Share camera for $99 and I think these predate the GoPros. Um, these were out when the flip cameras were out and this is a actually a very awesome camera for $99 and being waterproof. Um, I dunked this in the tank many times to check on the fish and whatnot and my biggest problem that I ran into this was that I broke the uh, USB connector on it so I couldn't charge it anymore. The battery uh, does come out of this model and um, I can charge it in a, a separate charger but my charger's broken so I uh, had to give up on this camera because I didn't feel like having to reinvest it. But for uh, $99 the Kodak cameras were actually very good. So. In the middle of filming, I then invested in the second generation of the Kodak PlaySport. I got this one, I think, in 2011. It also does 1080p, waterproof. This one, though, the battery is built into it, so you can't change it out if you had extra batteries. But I don't do enough filming where it made that much of a difference. Um, this one's also pretty good. Um, the biggest problem I had was the camera stand mount the thread stripped on it so I can't mount it in a camera stand so I usually have to clip it onto something else. Um, of course it holds the SD card and uh, you can you have to charge it through the uh, USB cable uh, so I haven't uh, destroyed that yet. And I still use this one for a few things. This is all I do for filming a underwater is take a bunch of elastic bands and stick it on a pole and dunk it in the water. My latest camera is a Sony Handycam, the HDR CX260V. This uh, has a really great zoom feature on it, uh, image stabilization, and the main reason why I got this was it has a microphone line in. I needed a camera, I wanted to videotape a presentation I was giving. And uh, this was really the cheapest camera I could find that had a line in. You can get uh, cheaper cameras but it's really hard to find them with a, a microphone input on it. And this camera is very, very nice. I paid roughly $500 for it a couple of years ago. I think they may have come down in price. It has a built-in 16 gig of memory, so you really don't even have to have a, 
an SD card for it. Um, another feature I really like with it is it has this built-in USB cable so I can just plug it right into my computer and it will charge through this or I can download the images to it. Um, it does have a, an SD slot in the bottom which is very annoying to have it down in the bottom because my camera stand mount sticks in here and it hides the card so I can't take the card in and out uh, that easily. Tripod mount of course and it also has a HDMI output if you want to watch uh, TV right off of it. So overall it's a really good camera and the majority of my uh, footage is uh, now filmed with this camera. As I said I wanted a camera that had a microphone input just to get a higher quality audio. So I started off very cheaply for $25 this cabled microphone. This is the Audio-Technica ATR3350 omnidirectional condenser microphone. Uh, basically you just plug uh, this end into your camera and it has a microphone with a little windshield on it and then this little doohickey which I'm not exactly sure what it does. It must be a little amplifier with a uh, on off switch. So this works really well because it plugs directly in, but you're basically tethered to your camera with this huge 25 foot wire mess. And of course you can see it's all tangled up because I don't really use it anymore. And the other problem that I ran into was that with this um, has a battery in it and I kept forgetting to turn off the microphone and it drains off the battery. So I started sucking through batteries, which is very annoying to use. But uh, overall, it works really well if you're on a super budget for $25. It's, uh, it's pretty good. And then uh, that microphone's a mono microphone, so you need this uh, mono to stereo adapter. Otherwise, on the camera, it will just record with one channel only. So uh, I had actually a couple comments on some videos of people saying that their right ears were lonely because... Uh, my audio is only coming out of the left uh, channel, which I didn't realize it when I mastered the videos. So for four bucks, you need one of these little uh, doohickeys to plug into your camera. After that, I purchased a wireless mic system. And this is the Asden WLX Pro Lavalier System. It was around $145 and it uses UHF frequencies so that's an analog transmitter um, and it receives on this. Again this plugs right into the uh, camera and you need the, the little adapter to make sure it gets the stereo. And this works okay. I did um, get some bad uh, feedback, or not necessarily feedback but just static during transmission so there are some other frequency that I was probably interfering with. Um, it works well okay down in the greenhouse because I don't have a lot of electronics down there but recording around the house and stuff I think the phones or cell phones uh, might interfere with it. Um, it uses some 9 volt batteries and uh, if you're going to do something important it's a good idea to replace them uh, each time because they'll last a, a couple of hours. Um, they're okay for the $145 that I paid for them I was expecting better with it so I uh, continued my search for microphones. I then ended up with the uh, Sony ECM-AW4 wireless microphone. Uh, this is just the transmitter side. I'm actually talking into the microphone. And there's one that looks identical to this on the uh, camera. And it just plugs right into the side of the camera. Nice thing about this is it has uh, the stereo output even though I'm recording in mono. Uh, so I don't have to use that adapter. It saves a little space. And uh, just like on the camera, uh, it has this clip so I can clip this on. Now this has a microphone built into it so I don't even need uh, to plug in the external but I like it a little bit closer up to me just so it doesn't pick up some of the other uh, background noise. And um, it uses uh, Bluetooth so I get a range of about 35 feet. Most of my audio work I'm much closer than that. I just want to be uh, within distance of the camera. And uh, this was $160 for this. Um, much, much better than the analog uh, ones. And if you're going to be uh, fairly close to your camera, I'd recommend this uh, over just about anything else. Anything above this, you're into hundreds and hundreds of dollars to uh, have a halfway decent uh, microphone transmitter. So for the hobbyist that just wants to do some general mic work, um, this is an excellent, excellent purchase. I can't recommend it enough.
This is using the camera without the microphone. It's the built-in mic, and it picks up all kinds of background sound, especially in the dome, which echoes everything. And you can hear the water running into the fish tank, if I have the fan running, or anything. So it makes a huge difference with using the microphone right here, and it really helps to eliminate all that background noise so you can actually hear me talking without the interference of everything else. So a lot of my videos I like to do the voiceover. I'll record a bunch of things and then get my thoughts together and write up a little script unlike this video where I'm sort of just improvising. Um, a lot of the voiceover, my early voiceover, I just use these uh, cheap uh, phone headset things. It's got a little built-in adapter and then it plugs into the uh, USB port on the computer. I did have another set that plugged into the microphone input on my computer um, but the computer audio is really, really poor, and most of them are, unless you have a really good high-end thing. And um, I had a lot of background hiss in it. So just by using one that mimics an audio card and plugging it in the USB, it eliminated uh, all that hiss that I was getting from my background, and it saved me a lot of time of trying to edit the audio, the hiss out of the audio. Uh, so these are actually pretty good. This, these are uh, Plantronics. I don't know what the model is, but uh, I think they're like 15 bucks. So if you're looking for some fairly halfway decent uh, recording for doing voiceover, these uh, actually work fairly well. Um, the problem is, is that being so close to the face, it does pick up every time you have a little P sound or whatnot. So I did upgrade to uh, something a little bit different. So currently for my voiceover, I'm using the Blue Microphones uh, Snowball USB microphone. It was $60 and it was well worth that investment. That's short money for a halfway decent microphone. And um, along with that, I did get a newer microphone suspension boom scissor arm stand for $13. And I do have the uh, microphone windscreen pop filter. And it's got this little flexible gooseneck holder on it. And this was only $9. So the whole setup with the microphone, with the arm and whatnot, was um, seventy-four dollars or something like that. For my lighting, you may have seen my last video on how to build a twenty-five dollar light panel. I now have two of these lights, and they work extremely well. And they really have made a huge improvement on the uh, light quality of the videos. Um, I'm getting a nice uh, white light for lighting up everything. And if I wasn't using those. Um, it would look something like this for most of my videos. Um, this is just under standard uh, compact fluorescent lighting. Doesn't look very good and usually I would have to uh, take a picture of something white like a piece of paper and then uh, do a white color correction on the video. So, so adding some extra light into these are uh, a huge improvement on uh, the video quality. I did make up the second light panel. Came out a little bit better than the first one. And also both light panels, I did make a stand on them so they can attach into the uh, tripods. It's just a bracket that I have a quarter inch nut welded on. And then I use some of my old destroyed tripods for holding them up. These tripods aren't good for much else. So, so here I am taking a video on my homemade selfie stick. It works pretty well. Always have the sun in my eyes, but for the most part, this is how I use it. This is the primary computer setup. It consists of a Dell Precision M4800 workstation laptop. Um, I do a lot of programming and development work, so this is the core to everything. Probably overkill for some of the video editing, but it sure is nice having a nice fast processor to do a lot of the work. And then are my dual 20 inch displays. I like to run them in portrait mode instead of landscape mainly because of all the software development I do. I can just get more onto the screen that way. But if I was going to do a lot of video editing, I would definitely turn them around into their standard landscape mode. I also run out of disk space a lot, so I uh, have this little Western Digital Passport. And hiding underneath my workbench is this little Synology disk array system, which holds all of my archival videos. For my video editing software, I use a package called CyberLink Power Director version 14, it's about $90. And for general video editing, it works really well. Basically, you just import all your media clips into it and 
drag them into your timeline and uh, it puts together a video for you. You can clip stuff out, do special effects, speed things up, slow them down, whatever you want to do with it, title it. And for my general graphics work, I use uh, Corel Draw. I've used it for years and it's a whole lot cheaper than using uh, Adobe Illustrator. So I just stick with that, just use it for so long I'm used to it. I know there's a lot of other free ones, but it's easy enough to uh, use this and manipulate my pictures quickly. So it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, but this works really well for me. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.